What is going on, everyone? I know this is kind of last minute, but I got a mail call in today. Um, not much stuff, but I just kind of wanted to share it, and I didn't feel like doing a recording, so I decided to go live. So hopefully we'll have some people pop in. But if y'all watched, well, actually, I'm going to save this one for later. Let's see. So I've got a package in from Microscale Industries. Let's see if we can show that there. Yep, Microscale Industries. Uh, they make decals and stuff. So well, let's see here. Uh, looks like I got a couple people. Hey, we got Marty from Eminem Short Lines just popped in. Um, but I did order some decals uh, from micro scale, but there was one particular thing that I ordered on there because I plan on using it for some upcoming projects. So let's see if I can get this opened up. We got Dragon Lover 68, Kyle Stevens, and Jack Jack. What's going on, Jack Jack? All right. Get rid of that plastic. So, first thing I got in, this is the stuff that I mainly wanted, but it's called Micro Crystal Clear. Um, this is glue that dries clear. Um, so that's why it's called Crystal Clear. Uh, we got Norman Rowe, uh, Lynn McCurdy, and Joe Rader. What's on, guys? So what I plan on doing and what I ordered this for is I'm going to be adding classification lights on some of my locomotives. And install instead of buying and installing uh, light lenses, uh, George from Soundtracks actually did this on a video, and this is the stuff he recommended. So that's going to be a project I plan on trying uh, once, you know, I'm done with phase two and phase three of this layout pull out and waiting on my uncle to get down here. So that way we can get the room, you know, insulated, turn into like, you know, the actual train room. And he told me he's like five weeks out before he can get here. So uh, Tim CP 368 Productions. You challenge me to go a month without buying anything. You know how tough that would actually be. Uh, I see Dwight Curley, Opa Dodge, Ink Rails. So, but this is the first thing I got out of that micro scale box. Um, the rest of them are all decals. So let me get all of those pulled out and I'll show you what I ordered. All right, so first up, I went with a set of the, oh, there we go, Gothic block letters and numbers. And I got these in white. Uh, reason being because I have, you know, the, sh the Shack of Sit Furniture Company, and I needed to actually say Shack of Sit Fern Co. on it. So I needed some decals for it. So here we go. And while I was on there, I decided to go ahead and get some really cool graffiti decals. But I didn't just get one sheet. I actually ended up getting two more. Oh, there we go. Two more to go with it. So I have a total of three sheets of graffiti. So that's uh, Micro Scales Contemporary Graffitis 1, 2, and 3. So if you're interested in part numbers for these, uh, that's for HO scale. It's 87-1533, 1534, and 1535. So, Kyle, I don't know how you do it, man. I really don't. So that's what I got from micro scale. Now, as far as this one goes, that says up on it. Uh, I do not think they're the laser cut ones, but they should be on a clear backing. Um, so you don't have to really cut all the way around it. You can just kind of cut close, as close as you can. But um, for those who were on um, Modeling Monday last night with Heat, I kind of showed this one real quick. 
So, because he was trying to get off and, you know, for Tom's trains and things. But what I ended up getting was a locomotive to complete my bicentennial set. And it actually comes with a set of decals for the number boards. Reason being because this locomotive was in use for not just freight, but even passenger commuter service. So if it was in passenger commuter service, the number boards were actually the train number and not the locomotive's number. So and I'm going to try to get this out without dropping it, because wouldn't that be? All right, here we go. So I've got a GP40P. Dash two Southern Pacific Bicentennial. And this is an Atherin Genesis with Tsunami 2. Um, I got this for 250. So yeah, dropping is very bad. That's right, Bowman. Yeah, I definitely don't want to drop this one. So that's one side of it. There's the other side. And I don't know if my U25B is close enough that I can pull it out and show you the difference. But yeah, I thought I thought you know 250 for this wasn't bad considering the fact that I saw a bid on eBay for a Atherin ready to roll Desert Storm locomotive, and the bid went up to 285, and that only had the economy sound and not the tsunami two sound. So so yeah, I I think I did a really good a deal on that one with letting the Desert Storm one go to someone else and me taking that one instead, which was a buy it now. And I say two fifty, it was actually two forty with ten dollars shipping. So that's where I got my two fifty. So that gives me all three of the Cotton Belt SP Bicentennial diesels with the uh, Bicentennial caboose. So the only thing that I have that's S that I do not have that is SP or Southern Pacific is uh, the American Freedom Train, which, yeah, that one's going to be easier said than done on getting. So I don't know if I'll get that or not. But thank you, uh, Norman, for a uh, compliment on a great-looking loco. It is a fabulous-looking locomotive. It's too pretty to shelf queen material. Okay. So, uh, hey, we got Shay's in scale here. Uh, let's see who else. Randy's Rock and Roll. Yeah, I guess he's lurking with the eyeballs. And I think that's the only other two that I've seen popped in. So, and if I mess with the camera, it's actually on my phone. So, other than that, that's all I wanted to share you, share with you. Um, but yeah, some of the lights I got to do on here. Let me see if I can pull it up a little closer. So, right here, there's like a little silver. That's actually supposed to be a classification light. And so that's actually one of the reasons why I got this. So that way I can install a, I think it's a 0306 LED in there. <laughs> that, yeah, he does. Um, Shay, with that being said, hold on. Mine's not broken. So mine's good. But my wife will tell you, I do not have a good track record. So, Norman, are you looking forward to me licking and sticking the decals or actually putting them on the correct way? So, <laughs> hey, Mr. Jimbo Trains, welcome. Welcome. So, but anyways, that's really all I've got on this one. Train Fan 120, how am I doing on this fine Tuesday? Man, I'm doing fabulous. Um, I'm looking forward to the weekend. So, okay, Norman, I will do it the correct way for you. What is the starting bid on the chair? Um, I don't know. What does a chair go for these days? I, I don't keep up with that one. I mean, it's unlike Robert's. I mean, this one's got a good pad here. And even, you know, the seat's got a good pad on it, so you don't have to worry about the, you know, the, the hard metal. Um, I think that one would probably go a little higher than what Robert's would have before it got broken. 
So <laughs> Dwight says 25 cents. <laughs> Dwight, you're probably going to end up paying like 25 bucks just in shipping. So, all right, y'all. Well, I'm going to let y'all have at it. I've been on here for long enough, just blabbling. So, but yeah, I just wanted to share the brand new locomotive that I got. If I come across another, I'm going to say not rare, but ununique locomotive um, that I end up purchasing, I will definitely show those off too. And um, one, one bit of good news is I've actually got the new layout design ready to go. So you're going to see that in an upcoming video within the next couple of weeks. So I do, do I know what a shelf queen is uh lynn i apologize i do not so uh, if you want to put that in the comments that would be great uh, fill me in maybe it's just going over my head which a, a lot of things do uh martin says that he sees uh dwight's quarter and he raises a nickel so hey we're at 30 cents for the sh uh for the chair and probably about 25 bucks in shipping if not more probably more than that so um but yeah, other than that, um, I do have a design laid out. It's actually going to encompass this whole room. So 20 by 20, it's going to be a massive layout. And it is going to be double leveled. Uh, so you're going to see that video coming pretty soon. It probably won't be this Sunday, but maybe the next Sunday. And then for the 4th of July, I do plan on going up to the hobby shop and grabbing all of my Bicentennial stuff, um, including the U25, if I can get a decoder in it in time. And this, that's what they call a building or a train that sits on the shelf and never gets used because it's too pretty. Oh, I've got some of those right here. And they're in O scale, which I do not have anything O scale. So, yeah, I've got some of those. And this one is not light either. It's sucker is heavy. So... Yes, I like F units. I like E units. Those are not prototypical because SP did not have a any F units in daylight. So that is a those are actually MTH, but Lionel started that one. Um, but yeah, I plan on going up to the hobby shop, and I do plan on running the bicentennial fleet with bicentennial cars. So I think that's going to be something pretty fun to do as well uh, for Fourth of July uh, weekend. Yeah, monsters O scale. That's why they sit on what Lynn's calling the shelf queen. So, yes, I do have a shelf queen, so that is true. I've even got a couple of uh, Nathan DeLay's um, scratch-built locomotives, one that I won in a contest and the other one that I actually had him do for me. So, uh, Kyle says, oh, like my key imports, Greenbriars. Greenbriars are box cars if i'm not mistaken um fill me in on that one kyle i would like to know that one too so mr jimbo's train says that he is struggling and we've got to go back up on a layout design idea okay. okay well if you need help with that you can always shoot me an email look at my about page and i can kind of give you some pointers on where to look at where to go on whatever you're trying to do um eventually i want every bicentennial unit that escaped the scrapper's torch before 1980. uh i as far as the two sp bicentennials i do not know when they got scrapped i do know the cotton belt one got scrapped in 1980 only because it was involved in a train not a derailment, but an actual accident, like a collision, and they actually had to scrap it. Sparky, live mail call. What did I get? Um, one of these to go on top of your Conrail logo. Just kidding. Just kidding. I would not do that to you, Sparky. Um, oh, Lord, that's funny. So everybody knows Rick has Rita, right? I do not know who designed these, but this one actually says Hillary and Obama. So, wow. I don't know if I'm going to use those or not. 
And then the guy on the side, I don't even know who that is. But hopefully everybody is peachy today. So, okay. So Kyle says the Greenbriars were CNO steamers. Chessie had one. There were 614. Um, so Greenbriars, what wheel classification was that? Because I'm not very familiar with Greenbriars. Um, Dwight, unfortunately, it is not bingo time yet. Um, last I checked, I think I'm still too short from the 700, and I got to hold on to that for a week, and then will be bingo time. Um, Sparky says he can't see the chat very well. Well, Sparky, I'll try to keep up for you because I'm actually going to end it pretty soon. Um, also on my list is a Conrail Ballast Express Dash Eight. That would be cool. Um, now was the Conrail Ballast Express Dash 8, was it a B class or a C class? Uh, for those who do not know what the B and the C class is, B is your, uh, two axle trucks. Your C is your three axle trucks. Um, there was only two locomotives that had a D class from my understanding. And that was the DD 35 and the DD 40s. Uh, let's see here. I can't hit the like. I didn't get the milk. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Sparky, it's not a Conrail, but it's got a Conrail color on it. It's got blue. So I don't know if that helps or not. Okay, so C38-9 or C32-8, those are dash eights. So... Uh, let's see here. Well, Sparky, you know I'm building you the peanuts, man. I, I've actually got them building up for you. I'm waiting until I get a huge box. So that way when you get the box in, it's like in a refrigerator box. So that way you have you can actually pour your peanuts out and you can just go and jump in them to them like a leaf pile. So I'm actually working on that for you. Yes, the U50. Was it a U50D? I think they just called it the U50, but yeah, it was a BB and a BB. And Alco also had the class 855 that was the same way. And I think Union Pacific was the only one that had those. Um, and I actually knew of a retired engineer who actually got to drive a U50. And he said he hated that thing because... When they had the U-50s, they didn't have signals at the time on the cotton belt or the SP. It was all timetables. And so he said, when you were coming up to a turnout, the uh, front and the last trucks are articulated. So once that first truck started taking the diverging track on the turnout, the locomotive was still going straight until the second truck got, the, uh, got going on the turnout. So he said, you really didn't even know you were going to take a diverging track until you were already committed. Uh, no, Dwight, this is not on track Tuesday. That's actually going to be on pretty soon. Um, so there you go. And yes, Tim, it's the C855. That is it. Exactly it. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I thought, Train Fed. I thought it was just the U50 that had the BB uh, wheel classification, and then they changed it to the U50C, which was bringing it down to a six axle locomotive. So, uh, let's see. Fourth, it's fourth Tuesday, is it not? Yeah, it's the fourth Tuesday. So is day, all right, Norman, take care, man. Um, isn't, is day the fourth Tuesday or is he the third? Um, unfortunately I don't get to make on track Tuesday cause we got, uh, our other hobby, which is scouting. And so our scout meetings are on Tuesday night. So I don't get to make on track Tuesday, which means I got to get off of here so I can get ready because we got a pack meeting tonight. So, uh, but if it is Dave Thurber, um, definitely go check out the on track Tuesday guys. They're great. So um, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and hop on off because I need to get ready. And I'm sure y'all are fixing to be headed over to uh, on track Tuesday here in about 15 minutes. So, uh, Boxcar Benny, 
he just kind of went MIA from my understanding and Robert from Fly Flying that Robert from the Flying Crow who just took his first flight has uh, stepped in uh, Benny's place. So, and for those who do not know about the first flight video, it's on Community Junction's channel. It's it's hilarious. So definitely worth seeing. So other than that, y'all have a great night and I will see you later. Hey, John from Scoop Hill River Valley, you just popped in at the last minute. So, um, so Ben has bad internet. So that's what it is. So there you have it. So, all right, y'all be safe out there and I will see y'all later. Take care and happy railroading.